On our last dive trip at the Blue Heron Bridge, I had my super macro set up to search for really small subjects when I stumbled across this balloon fish. Balloon fish are so intriguing, I just had to spend some time photographing it. Here is one of the portrait shots I got, and here is a super macro shot of its amazing eye. Now going back 13 years, I took this image in 2005 on a dusk shore dive in Carousel with a simple point and shoot camera. At that time, it was my all time favorite image and I was really hooked on underwater photography. I have always found balloon fish to be beautiful and really fun to photograph. They're somewhat skittish, but if you are patient, they will sometimes face you and even allow a very close approach. They often seem to be smiling. Despite their rotund, somewhat bloated shape, by using their pectoral and other fins, they can actually maneuver fairly well, though they are quite slow. The balloon fish has long, sturdy, even sharp spines, which are actually modified scales that normally lie flat on their body surface. However, these spines can point straight out when the fish inflates its stomach if threatened by a predator. Now, balloon fish are primarily nocturnal, and most of their feeding takes place at night. Their large eye size is an adaptation to their nocturnal lifestyle, allowing for better night vision. But they also have excellent day, excellent day vision. I find the most alluring things about balloon fish is the way their large eyes seem to sparkle with colors. How can you not try to photograph them? Now, for most of the macro shots seen here, I used a 60 millimeter macro lens with a single strobe positioned above and pointing almost straight out as seen here. Now, for my super macro shots, I used a teleconverter, the red arrow, placed between the camera body and the macro lens, the green arrow. To my flat port, I added a clamp, blue arrow, to attach a retractable 10 diopter wet lens, white arrow, for even more magnification in case the fish allowed me to get really close. Now, for these super macro shots, you really must pull your strobe in tight. You must be very patient in your approach. The fish usually swims away, but a few times I have gotten lucky. Now, here's a diagram of a typical fish eye. See my first Insight into Eyes video for a review of the parts of the eye. The colors seen in the balloon fish eye are in the cornea, the front clear part of the eye, the green arrow. The cornea covers and protects the inner structures of the eye and allows light to pass through it like the crystal on a watch. Light then passes through the round spherical lens, the red arrow, which focuses light onto the back of the eye, the retina, which is the purple arrow, which acts like the film on a camera. It's analogous to it. The retina turns light into chemical impulses, which are then sent via the optic nerve to the brain. The balloonfish cornea has striking iridescence. This is structural, not pigmentary coloration. It is produced when light hits boundaries between layers, in this case, different corneal layers, that differ in their refractive index, in other words, their, their ability to refract and focus light. Here is a view from above. You can see the iridescence in the upper part of the cornea. These colors can appear rainbow-like, shimmering, or sparkling, and change with viewing angle. In everyday life, we see iridescent coloration from films and soap bubbles and oil slicks. Iridescence can be found throughout the animal kingdom, for example, in insect wings, bivalve shelves, and bird feathers. Corneal iridescence in fishes limits the amount of light entering the eye on a bright sunny day on the reef, like sunglasses. Bright sunlight from, from above is reflected without reducing the amount of light coming in from the side or coming in from straight ahead. In a darker setting, the coloration lessens to allow more light into the eye. Now, when shooting super macro, keep in mind that your camera does not know what exact plane you want to focus on. Here's a shot I took of a balloon fish eye where the corneal iridescence is so blurred it is barely visible because the camera auto-focused on the iris, which is slightly behind, further away from the cornea. I often have to lock my focus, then rock back and forth ever so slightly, which is what I did here. This is another balloon fish. In this case, my camera again auto-focused on the iris, but I locked my focus and moved back very slightly to focus on the cornea to show the colorful corneal iridescence, which is now tack sharp. While not as prominent, if you look closely, you will notice that many other fishes also have corneal iridescence. I'm going to show you a few examples. Here's a lizard fish. This is a sea robin, a jawfish eye, and a frogfish eye. 
And look at this patchy whitish corneal iridescence against the red background of a scorpion fish eye. So the next time you are doing portrait or macro shots of fishes, pay special attention for coloration in their eyes and definitely pay close attention to the beautiful, stunning eyes of a balloon fish. If you find this interesting, you might want to check out my book, The Aquatic Eye. It's inexpensive and available on Amazon. I wrote it to encourage interest in the beauty and biology of ocean life. And thank you so much for your attention. <clears throat>